Hey you guys, I got a special treat for you. I told you that I had some big projects that we were working on. Um, and I wanted to show you something I was working on with for my mother-in-law that I did complete here a couple weeks ago. I've just been very, very busy. And I need to pack it up and get it out. Matter of fact, if you saw the fairy gnome village that I did for my mom, I still haven't mailed that out. I got lots of stuff to get out. Um, but this is for my mother-in-law. I redid a clock. And um, I'm actually going to show you it standing up first. Um, I think it's gorgeous. You'll have to see the before and after. The before is from 19, late 80s and 90s. Uh, but it was like an oak color, like kind of like my walls. It's like a red, red pine oak. Um, but I completely redid all this. I actually dark stained the bottom and then roughed it up and then stippled it and then Went back up to the top, but I, I colored that. Actually, it's a really pale, pale tint of pink in it, but you won't know it after I distressed it and uh, and antiqued it. And I have a special way of antiquing my things. Uh, I have a couple different ways, but this is way before Tim Holt stuff came out. Uh, but again, it's actually oak underneath. And again, you'll see the before and after at the end. But I painted it, and then I went in and roughed it up. And then you could see, like, you could see the oak through it, and then... I made sure it bubbled a little bit because I was looking for the old look at the top. At the same time, this is kind of the new look for cabinetry. Um, so what I did is, if you guys remember the Prima warehouse pack that was out um, box, I got that. And then I had bought a few things from Saw Crafters here a few weeks ago, like maybe a month ago. I finally got to use some. I embossed uh, the fence after putting it together, sliced it together, cut a little piece off to match. This used to be a kitty cat picture in it. You'll see the, uh, the before pictures. I kept the girls where they were going up. I like the daytime with the darker work, <clears throat> wood. And then you'll see the nighttime with the lighter wood. It's a whole concept of what I was doing day, night, night, day. Um, and this is a, from the same paper. What I did is double layered it. And then I triple layered the fence and pop dotted it up. And then I took some wood hearts from Saw Crafters. And then I gave them a little color around the edges to kind of blend in. If you, you can't really see it too well with the picture. Um, video it that is and I did put some stickles in it I have this thing with you know clear stickles and then waterfall stickles and then that eucalyptus one is like beautiful but I use like four different colors to give this old look to the fence um, wood rotten fence is what I was looking very old very country-ish uh, similar to actually what my fence looked like when I moved here it was gross um, it's cool but it's gross so, you know you know picture wise vintage wise it's cool until you have to deal with it in your course this is Florida and things rotten fast but <clears throat> but I kept the whole side look on that part of the paper I just cut perfectly as well as I could around the edge and then I put two of the hearts over on this side XO for hugs and kisses and then this one says I love you I used uh, liquid pearl and then I put um, glossy accents in to give it that gem effect and there must be a possum in my yard again wonderful um, shh. So on top, what I did was the opposite. I did day and night, and if you go back and you'll see the old number system on the clock, I got, shh, I'd have to see if I could show a picture of the company that I got the clock from. It was not from Saw Crafters. It was from a different company, and I love the Roman numeral look better. And I actually used the same colors that were down here, and I mixed this one to do the background piece of, and I got that from a freebie piece from the company that I ordered from the clocks from and you'll see another clock or two down the line and some other pieces that I purchased from this other company uh, stay tuned and I may be able to show you that later um, but I wanted to make like metal in the back I wanted to look like molten metal at the same time it has blue and then I used a little liquid pearl to kind of soften it with a little look metallically to that um, if you look, and I have to go put this down, I'm going to show you when I lay it down, but there are prima flowers and silk flowers and dried flowers, and then I had this butterfly from um, Prima that was part of the packs that I got, and then I, what I did is I changed the color, added stickles, added pearl, liquid pearl, because I didn't, it was like a green, I didn't like it, and my mother-in-law asked for sage and sage, sage colors, and she wanted to keep the blue from the, the era, you know, the era of 1990s. Um, but I did it totally different to modernize it. I'm going to try if I can go ahead and this way you can see it. Um, now, if I were to show you the back, the back is totally different. This was okay, even though it was popped out way too much more than it needed to be. Um, but because of me thickening it and everything, it just, 
it ended up being really, really thick in the back. So this one wasn't so bad. I was able to tape it and then I heat embossed my tape um, so that um, it's not going to come off the back. But I still have all the pieces except uh, the clock. So I actually used the frame piece that was in here originally in the back to stiffen the paper and then added another uh, cardboard piece. And again, I was worried about the glass. Up here I had the same problem and I, I can tell you from taking the old clock out, the old clock had a shorter stub on it. Um, I did go, if you look, with a silver tone. Um, all clocks generally have the brass in the middle. It's how it levels it. That's the reason why the stem is still brassy uh, gold. Um, so it's kind of the leveling system in it. Um, so I couldn't do anything about that, but I changed the hand, I changed the whole clock because the clock would stick on the seconds. Um, so if you look, the girls are still climbing the clock. It actually repeats. I actually took out the chunk that would normally have been there, and then I took the rest of the pieces and put it up through here. Um, I don't know if you even saw up in there, I actually put a measuring piece up in there, and then I uh, ruffled this piece here and pop dotted that as well as stickled. But I did the same over here, and it's kind of really, really, really hard for me. To kind of show you this, but it says Gyp Gypsy Countess, and I like the idea it said Gypsy Countess because it's for a female, um, and it's counting. So I thought that was cool, and then I have like stub tickets up in there. It's hard to see, but it depends on the lighting and how you see it. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the reason why I went with the two different embossing powders is because I wanted the one to fade more in the back, and this one pop more in the front. Now the interesting thing about this, again, I'm. The back was supposed to only be about this thick, now it's like this wide. Again, I used uh, tape, and I'll show you. It's not the prettiest, but again, I heat set it in, so it's not going anywhere. But I did have a problem with one, worrying about getting the glasses thing in. So what I did is I took my extra hearts, my extra wood hearts, and then I glued them uh, with um, not hot glue. I used a different type of glue so that it would not move. Um, so it's not going anywhere. This glass is not going to go anywhere unless somebody pops it really hard. Uh, but you can tell and you can see a little closer how I distressed it and, and I bubbled it a little bit. Again, I was looking for the old age bubbled um, look. And I put new hooks on the back. Um, you can see these are all heat set. This is in pretty hot. Uh, these are all, you know, it's normal like packaging tape. But what I did is I set it in really well with the heat gun because it's not going to go anywhere. Um, normally you would set the clock, uh, uh, hang it with this piece in the back. I don't recommend it because I had to pop the back out about this much more than it was supposed to be. So I went and got new hooks for it. And so I got the brass easy to nail in. These are the ones I highly recommend if you're looking to redo something and they're easy to set in with a hammer. Um, plus the cool, that back looks just cool. I just, you know, the black and white thing goes with the, the dark wood and the light wood theme. That's the reason why I did that tape. So, um... Old new clock, um, and I would say Prima design because this is definitely Prima. Um, so I'll have a name for it, but I, I know it's a little bit longer video, though I do like to talk a lot. Um, this is one of my prize pieces that I've been holding back on. It did take me a while. It took me almost four and a half weeks to take the time, and it took me about 45 hours of work that I put into this. Um, but, you know, she loves it. She fell in love with it. I didn't want anybody to see it before I showed her. I didn't even videotape before showing anybody, I wanted to show her first. So um, if you can see dark with the light and light with the dark, um, I hope you like it. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I think it's gorgeous. Uh, it's a great way to upcycle an old piece, even though it was beautiful within itself. Um, I paid $5.16 for it, or no, yeah, $5.16 or five twenty six at a Goodwill for it. And I put a $10 piece of clock in and the papers and I probably put um, 30 bucks into it and it's gorgeous and I would definitely hang it in my house not my colors in my house but these are colors in hers and she loves it so it's gonna work in great in her house so this was her birthday present from a couple weeks ago so I need to get it out in the mail uh, again love to hear your thoughts below enjoy the pictures and make sure you see the before and after of the clock and the bottom where the cats were bye guys